Wham Bam claims to have created the ultimate 3D printer bed using genuine carbon fiber. So is it a game changer or just marketing hype? Let's examine through a lot of testing and find out. When I started 3D printing, the popular bed surface was either Captain tape or Blue Painters tape over bare aluminium. And the bed wasn't even removable, so that meant braving a scraper to get your prints off. Fortunately, things have come a long way since then, but Wham Bam is trying to take the next step using carbon fiber. For the last month or so, I've been testing these Wham Bam carbon fiber beds. At the time of recording, they've only just been announced and are available for pre-order. So there's not a dedicated information page, meaning all we have to go off is the pre-order page by clicking on one of the products. We can then scroll down and read the description. The blurb makes a lot of mentions of this being genuine, as in actual carbon fiber encased in resin. So let's start by examining exactly what that means. This is a piece of rigid carbon fiber plate purchased for use in a CNC machine to cut out things like drone frames or motorsport parts. And this is the actual carbon fiber. As you can see, it's soft and floppy like a fabric because that's what it is. If we separate only one layer, we can see that it's individual carbon strands woven together in a twill pattern. And here's my best impersonation of that with my fingers. Carbon fiber parts are created by combining the carbon weave with epoxy resin. The resin permeates the weave with layers of the two built up until the desired thickness and strength is achieved. The important thing to understand here is that the epoxy resin is a thermoset, meaning two components are mixed together before a chemical reaction makes them cure and harden. Because of that, vacuum bags and even autoclaves are used to ensure all oxygen is removed, there's no voids, and the resin sets exactly how it's meant to. If you want to learn more about how carbon fiber products are made, I'd highly recommend the Easy Composites YouTube channel, from which the footage you just saw came particularly since there's an emphasis on creating composite parts at home using technologies like 3D printing. The point I'm trying to establish here is that whether it's in sheet form or molded into a three-dimensional form like this piece of 2005 F1 car, carbon fiber products are composites with carbon weave completely encased inside resin, in this case, epoxy resin. The wham bam beds are the same, so keep this in mind for later in the video. Let's work through this description and evaluate some strengths and weaknesses. As we've established, the epoxy resin is a thermoset, and as the text states here, that means it can't be reformed by heat. In contrast, the PEI that we commonly see on 3D printer beds is a thermoplastic, meaning it can be remelted and reformed. In fact, we can even buy PEI filament to 3D print with. The benefit of this is that the surface should be quite tough. It can handle direct contact at 150 degrees and printing right up to 270 degrees. That's pretty good, but just keep in mind regular PEI sheet is quite similar. For instance, on a Bamboo Lab machine, the nozzle touches the bed for ABL at 140 degrees, and for nylon, the temperature will be set to 260. One thing to stress is that this is not an effect sheet. It won't leave the carbon fiber twill weave pattern behind, like a PEO or similar sheet will leave a pattern behind, including a carbon fiber effect. Remember that the carbon weave is encased on the inside. Parts that are touching this bed will be quite glossy, and under certain light conditions you can see a little bit of the weave pattern. Like other beds to clean it, we can use paper towel and isopropyl alcohol, and that's exactly what I use throughout. And alternatively, you can use dish soap and water. We'll also see down the bottom that this is a one side only plate. And that's because the carbon fibers are conductive and block magnetic fields, which means if you try to put it face down, the spring steel won't stick to the magnet. I tried this and it does work better than they describe. It will stick, it's just nowhere near as strong with its magnetic force as it is when you have it the right way around. Probably the main selling point of this carbon fiber bed is ease of use and versatility. This table compares carbon fiber to the other surfaces offered by Wham Bam. And for me, the standout points is that it's very tough. There's no known filaments that bond so well that they damage the bed and every filament is easy to release. Personally, I use PEI for PLA, Garolite or G10 for PETG, and then the Bamboo Lab engineering plate with a special adhesive for filaments like ASA and nylon. So if this new plate can handle all of these filaments, I think it makes it very attractive. The last thing to discuss here is the price, as these are cheap and are marketed as a premium product. The largest and most expensive is the bed for the Magneto X at 136 US, 
and the other plate I'm testing for Bamboo Labs is 59 US. It's important to disclose that I was given these two beds for free for the purposes of testing and then giving feedback. I was a backer of the original Wham Bam Kickstarter and have purchased many more Wham Bam products since then with my own money. And I'm a happy customer, but don't worry, I'll still be testing these by following my review policy. Firstly, some prep for any printers that use nozzle touching for homing or ABL. For the Bamboo Lab printers, the nozzle is already set to 140 before the probing, but for other printers, this might not be in place. On my Magneto X, I was already probing at 150 degrees, which didn't seem to pose any problems. However, 140 is still recommended. The webpage also lists that carbon fiber takes longer to heat up and that you should let it heat soak for five minutes before starting the print. I didn't do this, but if you did want to add it, it's pretty straightforward to do. Both Marlin and Clipper support the G4G code. Adding G4P300000 to a Clipper macro or start G coding your slicer will pause everything for five minutes for the heat to soak through. Our first test is for the accuracy of fitment, and I tested this plate on the Bamboo Lab P1P, X1 Carbon, and Bamboo Lab A1 without any dramas. The P1P and X1C had sufficient clearance at the back, the corners lined up perfectly, and the tabs for grabbing at the front were exactly where you would expect. The metal pad at the rear was also in the right place for nozzle wiping. The plate for the Magneto X was also a good fit, lining up perfectly with the retaining pins at the back, and the tabs hanging in the correct position over the front. For my materials testing, I was working off this preliminary settings table. And we start with PLA that needs a bed temperature of 60 degrees and no glue. I did some whole projects in PLA using this bed, and some of these parts were very small and easy to dislodge. But from all of this, I only lost one that needed to be reprinted by itself. So adhesion with PLA was quite good. Best of all, once the bed had completely cooled down, the parts completely self-released just like PEI. So PLA, successful and as advertised. Next, PTG, with an 80 degree bed and no glue. This entire Caterin Mark II guitar was 3D printed on the Magneto X using the Wham Bam carbon fiber bed. There was a lot of parts and that included some reprints as I changed my mind on materials and colors. I also did some random other prints on the P1P as they came up. PTG, compared to PLA, didn't quite self-release once the plate had cooled, but only a gentle flex was needed to get the parts loose from the surface. Adhesion was great, and overall I'd say it's on par with a Garolite sheet that I normally use for PETG. TPU recommends a bed temperature of 50 degrees and no glue, and I followed these parameters with great success. All of my prints stuck down nicely, but I could peel them off without the need to flex the plate once it had cooled down. I normally do TPU on a PEI sheet, and once again this matched the performance. ABS is where it gets interesting, because it says glue is only optional, so that's what I started with using the stated temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. I was tuning for a new filament on the Magneto X, and as you can see, this pressure advanced tower came loose partway through. I then thought I'd try my luck again without glue on this temperature tower, and it lasted a pretty long time before it got knocked off, and I thought maybe because the first layer was 280 degrees. So I sliced up this guitar stand that had a large contact patch for the first layer, and it didn't go well. It was actually a lot worse than that because I wasn't watching it closely and I had a hot end completely destroyed from this. So I would suggest that ABS without glue is possible but I wouldn't recommend it. Elsewhere on the table, this nano polymer adhesive from Vision Miner was recommended and several people have raved about how good this stuff is to me. Previously, I purchased an equivalent product called Dimafix from my filament sponsor X3D. It's a fair bit cheaper and it has this foam flat end to make application easy. All you have to do is work back and forth applying a thin coating over the surface of the bed. I've had a lot of success with this on other beds, and compared to glue stick it's a lot lot neater as it doesn't build up and leave thick chunky bits all over the bed. You'll also get several prints out of it before you need to reapply. The difference this time was night and day, with the print completing successfully on the first time. Unfortunately, I used the same G-code which was sliced with quite a large brim, so while flexing was able to release the model successfully, the brim was a little bit trickier, and I needed to gently slide a flat blade underneath to peel it off. Some parts of the brim were a lot harder than others to remove, including one section where the plastic was so thin I couldn't get it off without damaging the plate. More on this later. So ABS will stick quite well, assuming you use an adhesive, and I wouldn't recommend a brim. Next, ASA using the same combination. Bed 100 degrees and Dimafix adhesive applied. This worked really well, 
the part stuck nicely without any warping and I was able to flex the plate to pop off the part easily and in one piece. The last filament I tested were two different types of nylon. And again, I went for a 100 degree bed with adhesive applied. This first type of nylon I usually avoid because it warps no matter how much I dry it and true to form, that's what happened here. I think initially it actually did stick quite well to the bed, but the warping was so severe it never really stood a chance. So I switched to a newer and more forgiving roll of nylon, printing a different type of guitar stand, and this time it flexed off quite easily. So I'm willing to give this one a tick for nylon overall. But we'll reiterate, it's not a miracle cure if your nylon is warping severely and falling off the bed because of it. With the Dimmerfix coating still in place, I decided to test PLA one more time to see the effect. And the take home is that the plate is just as effective, but once cool, it won't self-release the PLA. Fortunately, removal is as easy as flexing the plate like you would with other filaments. And you should know, if you want to remove Dimmerfix and similar adhesives, all you need is paper towel and IPA, and a little bit of elbow grease will get it right off. So that means the glue and part silhouette haziness you saw earlier is only temporary. There's a lot on the store page talking about just how durable this surface is, so how's it held up for me? Firstly, the bamboo lab plate, which to me looks almost as good as new. There is one area in the middle, it's very hard to see on camera, but I think there's some very slight pitting from where I removed a PETG print before it had completely cooled down. If I zoom in on this spot, you can just see a very subtle texture, not really enough to affect the operation. Let's revisit the Magneto X plate and where the nozzle went too close laying down that brim. I printed a square of filament over this position, hoping that when I lifted it, it would pull the remaining filament, and this did work to some extent. After some more cleaning and polishing, all of the material was removed, and we can see that the printer drove the nozzle slightly into the surface of the bed, which means this damage wasn't the bed's fault. There's also some fine scratches where I was using my blade to try and peel these bits off. So I would say, under normal use, these beds are quite durable. However, just like any other bed, if you do abuse them, they will be damaged. So far, I would say that these do work as advertised, but there was still one thing bothering me. If you'll remember our explanation of how these are put together, you'll note that the carbon weave is on the inside, which means our printed filament only ever touches the epoxy resin, not the carbon. So why not replace the carbon with something cheaper like glass fibers, especially when we have beds already available from this construction, in the form of G10 or Garolite, which is created by having multiple layers of glass cloth, encased in epoxy resin and, like the Wham Bam carbon bed, compressed with heat until it cures. So do we need a fancy new carbon fiber bed if Garolite beds are already available? So I put this question directly to Peter, the boss of Wham Bam. Please pause the video if you want to read the whole thing because now I'm going to summarize. Firstly, Peter acknowledges that these are similar to Garolite beds, but explains that as they were testing Garolite, that they found quite a variance in the makeup of the epoxy, resulting in prints sticking too well to the point of ripping the bed, or not sticking well enough and falling off. By doing it in-house, they can formulate the resin to their exact Goldilocks spec. Peter also explains that the carbon is advantageous compared to glass, and that it can be quite thin, while still retaining the dimensional stability thereafter, and thin means light. On paper, these are an excellent product. And in practice, its performance did match the three types of bed I currently use for different filaments. These plates are good and I am considering buying some more, but don't get me wrong, they're not a giant leap like when we went from Captain Tape to PEI Sheet. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.